The Ben Heck Show is brought to you by Element 14, the electronic design community and online store built for engineers and hobbyists alike. Join now and browse the store at element14.com. Man, they are still at it out there. <gasps> well, in here, we're going to be finishing the Minecraft Logic Blocks project, specifically the input blocks with the switches, the logic gates in the middle, and the result blocks at the end that either light up or move to show you the result of the circuit you've made. Let's get started. Amazing builds, exclusive mods, cutting edge ideas, electronics, engineering, and more. Every week on Element 14's The Ben Heck Show. Oh boy, it's kind of scary out there. Lots of LARPing. Okay, today we're going to finish the Minecraft logic cubes. And we're going to build a switch block, an inverter, an AND gate, an OR gate, and a light block to show us the result. First, let's start with the switch block. We're going to put this circuit inside of it. This part we'll have to wire by hand. We're going to have a battery, coin cell, and then the battery is going to hook directly up to the output terminals because there's always voltage and ground on those. We're going to have a SPDT, single pole double terminal switch, just like Minecraft, and you can stick a torch in the top, which is going to be an LED. And, the, and we're going to have three pins on that so you can't insert it the wrong way. So the signal line, connects to the single uh, center pole of the switch. So if you push the switch down, the signal line will get positive voltage and the LED will be turned off. If you have the switch up, which is off, the signal line will be low and it'll allow current to pass through the LED, illuminating the LED. So it should behave just like a Minecraft switch block. All right, here are the cubes. Here are the battery packs, switches, and a resistor for the LED part. And then we're going to have these here at the top for the torches, and then one of these to output the signals. And then I made my own little circuit boards as well. I just cut them manually. Okay, I'm gonna use my redstone for reference. I'm gonna put the headers in there. Now these aren't gonna be as secure as the ones with the real circuit boards. I'll put some hot glue on it too. Hold it in place. Here's a battery pack. I want to make sure I actually align it. So positive voltage on the left, positive voltage in the middle. Ground is on the right, ground is on the right. So I want to actually align it just so the wires are the shortest distance. You know, I think the thing that helped Spielberg was he made more different types of movies earlier in his career, even though 1941 was a horrible bomb. But he got it out of his system. The battery is wider than the battery pack, therefore I have to make sure it's in place when I glue down the battery pack. Otherwise, you know, if I had the battery pack too far this direction, the battery wouldn't fit inside the case. I'm gonna bring these wires this way, and then the power wire will be like this. And uh, I'm gonna make a little slit in them so I can attach them to the pins. I do this a lot when I wire stuff. I'll basically have a contiguous wire, and then I'll remove just a little bit of shielding like that. But I won't cut the wire, I'll just remove some shielding. You have to be careful not to tear it from its source. And then I'll tin it. This allows me to connect the wire and, you know, keep wiring. So also by doing this, I don't have to connect anything else to these output pins. And so again, I'm wiring the circuit that I drew on the whiteboard. There we go. Okay, here's where the torch is gonna plug into. I've attached the blue signal wire to the two grounds. And then I've got a resistor here for where the positive voltage goes in. And that fits in the block here. I'm not sure if you can see that. And I'm going to secure it with, of course, hot glue. If you were going to say, I bet Ben uses hot glue, then you took the words right out of my mouth. Okay, so let's put this together. So I'm gonna make a, another slit here. Oh, that's a little, I don't think I need it to be that big. So as per the diagram, we want Ground on one side, 
uh, voltage on the other, and then the signal in between. I'm gonna try to do this one less crappily. Crappily, is that a word? I've already built these cubes a couple times, so I'm just trying to, I'm building them different each time, trying to find the best method. I'm gonna build four total. Soldering the switch outside of the box so I can see what I'm doing. Okay. Uh, so we have um, positive voltage here, ground there. Positive voltage is also gonna go to the LED, so as long as the switch is off, the LED will be on. Like anything I, I build, I try to make it open from, the, from a certain angle. So the plug is here and the switch is in the front, so I wanna wire things so it opens in this way. So this blue wire doesn't need to be this long because it only has to go down there. So I'll cut that short. Let's test this before we button it up. Plug it into some redstone. Okay, that works. Now this is a torch. It's an LED and then positives in the center and the two outer ones are ground. So if you just plug this in, it should turn on. Okay. And it's inverse, so if you turn the switch on, the LED turns off, which is how they behave in Minecraft. All right, I think this cube is ready to go. And the idea is basically this snaps together. So if you need to change the battery, you can pretty easily. Next, we're going to make some inverter blocks. In Minecraft, you can stick a torch onto the side of a block and it will act in inverse of what the block is, just like a torch on the top of the unit. So if you stick a torch into the side, this represents a torch going into the side of a block. Its default is on, but if you switch the block to on, the torch goes off. So it's basically an inverter. All right, so I'm gonna make a couple more of these and show you how I did it. So we have a uh, base board here. All right, and it goes in like that. And I've got these short size four screws that I bought from McMaster Car. I had to make sure the circuit board is centered because the piece that interlocks over it actually goes around the edges of the circuit board for a nice tight fit. Now, as before, we're going to kind of put it together using pieces just so it's, you know, just so we solder things perfectly aligned or somewhat perfectly aligned aligned well enough. You ever hear of casual Fridays? It's wear a muscle shirt to work Fridays. And then you had to drink Red Bull for lunch. <laughs> I inserted this small header in place of the service mount LED and now I'm putting the LED into it. And then I'm gonna bend the LED at an angle to represent the torch sticking out the side. And then this is what goes over it. Yeah. It's not a perfect representation of a torch sticking out the side of a block, but it's pretty good. Now before, as before, I need to set some certain pins on the logic chip. And in this case, I need to make it an inverter. So I'm gonna add pull down resistor on the input and then tie some of the other pins together to make it an inverter gate. All right, this one has the lid in place. Appears to be working correctly, so I'm gonna add a little bit more hot glue so the LED doesn't get destroyed. And then we'll put a little bit of brown electric tape around the LED to kind of make it look like a torch. Now it's time for a tech timeout. Today I thought I'd show you inside of my old Bill Paxton pinball machine because I've been working on it lately. This was something I built uh, just before we started the show actually, uh, over four years ago. I did it all by hand, which, <laughs> oh well, you live and learn. Let me show you some stuff inside. So we have a parallax propeller dev board here that drives everything. And we have like the display and the sound hooked into it. This mess is the driver board. This has all the inputs and outputs lights as well as switches. This big beefy connector is for the solenoids, the uh, things that actually move around. This is the solenoid driver. These MOSFETs through thick and thin have lasted for years now. Uh, yeah, additional IO and a motor driver. 
So here's the uh, PC power supply that has all the DC power and the AC powers in the back for like the lamps and whatnot. And then here's the 24 volt supply for the coils. And this, this is what I was actually working on just now. This is the um, sub game. In the back of the panel, there's actually a mechanical game you can play. I don't know why I did this. A submarine comes out. It's based off the movie U571, which Bill Paxton was in. And then the submarine will move backwards and you have to make a certain shot before it gets out of the crosshairs. And the issue the game was having was it wasn't uh, homing it properly. But I think I've got it fixed. So like when the game turns on, the sub is supposed to home itself. There it goes. All right. So yeah, there's the insides of my Bill Paxton pinball machine. So even I wire things as a complete mess. That's just part of life. Next, I'm going to make a logic gate cube. This is a cube that would sit between two switch cubes. And, well, this one's already put together, but what you would do is you'd put a torch in either one of these, and then this cube would either and or or it, and then send the output that way. Unfortunately, my universal gates aren't good enough to do this. They basically, I can't do a NAND with them. I can do a NOR, but not a NAND. Oh well. So I'm gonna have to wire it up manually. I've manually connected the two inputs to the output. So the grounds are interconnected and the power is interconnected. So these are the two inputs coming in and this is the output going out. It's kind of obvious. So what I need to do is I basically need a NAND gate. If um, these switches are both down, then this will output a zero. <laughs> it's so confusing because in Minecraft, uh, the switches down are on, even though usually a light switch is up to be on. So this is a one and a one. So if you have two ones coming into this, it needs to actually invert it in order to make the logic work in Minecraft. So yeah, basically I have to manually wire a NAND gate. And uh, I don't have, well, I have NAND gates, but I checked the data sheet. They don't work at low voltages, only 4.5 and up. So I've actually got to use some of my surface mount AND gates with a NOT gate in order to create a NAND gate. So I basically have to rewire this mess. Here we are. We have an AND gate. The two side inputs go into the AND gate. The output of the AND gate goes into this inverter or NOT gate. And the result of the inverter goes to the LED and to the output. So let me just show you this to you an example. Let's say you have your inverter torch here. This is how you would do an AND gate in Minecraft. These are your two inputs. So the torch is here to be on as well. But if these are, if both of these are off, I'm sorry, if both of these are on and then you get an output here. All right. It's time to make the final block, the light block, which shows the result of whatever circuits you've made. I'm gonna use one of these white LEDs like this because it'll be quite bright and it will illuminate through the plastic. But I wanna make sure the light is going to be bright. So I'm actually gonna put a separate battery on the light block uh, because by the time you get to the light block, you know, you've used a lot of energy. So I just wanna make sure it's gonna be bright. So I'm gonna have a battery here, and then the input's gonna come in, and then we'll use a transistor. <clears throat> so we're not actually gonna use the positive voltage rail coming from the rest of the circuit. What we'll do is we'll tie the grounds together, and then we'll use an MPN transistor, and we'll attach this to the LED and a resistor to the MPN tra transistor, so when the signal comes in, the transistor will sync current through the LED, lighting it. That way, this battery is kind of its own little thing. Simba the Lion King pushed his uncle off a cliff because that's the only way to kill Disney villains. Gonna add this transistor here. So this is an NPM, which means it's good at sinking current through the collector. So we'll attach um, this lead, which is the emitter, we'll attach that to ground along with the ground of the battery. Then we have a resistor going into the base. So we'll put the light that we're trying to control 
between the positive voltage and the collector. And then we'll also put a pull down resistor between the base and the emitter to uh, make sure that the transistor is off unless it's getting a signal. I always have tons of these 10K surface mount resistors laying around. And I'm just gonna stick it right between the leads. We could have actually used transistors to create some of the gates. You know, you can make a not gate with the transistor fairly easily, but you know, we had little integrated circuits, so we used them. I, I suppose I should probably glue this in place. All right, so. Oh yeah, more hot glue. I have three of them ready here. Now all that remains is to hook the LED up to the positive voltage and the collector. So I've got these white LEDs I have left over from a project that I did years ago. Okay, there's positive. Okay, so the notch is negative. Why can I never remember that? All right, so we're gonna want to, the LED to kind of be in the middle of it, so. But we still wanna be able to get at the battery. I printed this uh, with zero infill and I also made some uh, circular reductions in it. So it will hopefully show some light through. Yeah, that's a passable light block. It'd be cool to make one of these little motor on it too. Yeah. So I'm gonna just uh, put some hot glue around this so it just stays in place. Oh yeah, hot glue. You are awesome. But, you know, we want it so people can actually take this apart and replace the battery. Here are the resulting Minecraft logic blocks that we made. We have switch blocks. And these blocks go between the switch blocks for the AND gates and the NAND gates. Then we have some result blocks. We made some propeller ones just so it like, you know, does something. And these light up. Here are our side torches, which basically act as inverters. Here are torches we can stick into our switch blocks. It's mostly cosmetic, but whatever. And then I made quite a bit of redstone. We have right angle redstone going left and right, three way, one in, three ways out, and then like pass through redstone. All right, let's make a circuit and build a snowman. An and gate, all right, so we take one of our gate blocks and put it between the switches. So AND gate needs a torch on each one of these. So the premise here is these torches are lighting this redstone here. Then we hook up an inverter, side torch, okay. And then we hook that up to a result. Let's use the fan. No, let's use both. Let's hook up a fan and a light block because we can, there we go. So if this switch and this switch, result. Nice. Uh, let's see, what else can we make here? Let's do a simple inverter. We don't need the torches. Okay, so this is on, this is off and this is on, so it's an inverter. So I guess we could do an inverted inverter <laughs> yeah. All right, let's try that. Cool. I wonder if we can go, let's take the AND gate. I'm just going to stick blocks together to see what happens. Let's put an inverter into each side of it. And then hook that up to a result. Looks like I have created an OR gate. So I think the reason that worked, <laughs> yeah, this is one of those things I've basically just, you know, seen what works with what I've built. So this actually is more like a, a NAND gate, which is a NOT AND. So if both of these are on, the output is off. That's actually what it performs as. See? So if one is on or one is on, it, you know, it still runs, but if they're both on, the AND is a NAND, a NOT AND, and the result is a zero. 
So when you hook it up to the inverter, so this is actually acting as a NAND gate. But when we hook the NAND gate up to an inverter, that's what makes it an AND. Okay. So yeah, let's try that OR again. Usually in Minecraft, you make an OR by just putting two switches on one block, but we don't have that. Okay, so these are on, the redstone is lit. So when I activate that, I guess I need a result block. I don't think there are fan blocks in Minecraft, but I think they're cool. Okay, so that one or that one. Okay, so this isn't an official Minecraft gate, but the, the types of blocks we made, this gives us an ore. Let's try to make a more complex circuit. Check out this circuit I made. We have an and here, an and here, and another and here. And then I just hooked up a bunch of stuff to the output so it'll all glow. So this and this, okay, so that's, you know, positive logic. But, you know, this is also an AND gate. So then if this and this, now the whole circuit powers up. So what happens is basically these torches have been turned off, which allows this torch to turn on as, long, as well as this one, which powers this redstone, which goes into this AND gate. And as I mentioned, the AND gates in Minecraft are really NAND gates. So this one, so basically these blocks turn off this block, which allows this inverter block to turn on, powering the rest of our circuit. And see, a kid could stick their nose in that and be perfectly fine. Here, I'll prove how child-friendly and safe this is. No pain whatsoever. This was a fun project to make. I mean, there's a lot of work involved, a lot of, you know, design and prep, but the result is, you know, it's pretty tangible and it, and it does work. I mean, this would be a good toy for kids, actually, with the safety propellers. It shows that, you know, you can make interlocking logic cubes that simulate what happens in Minecraft, so I'm very happy with it. Are there different types of blocks we should have made? Let us know in the comments. That's all the time we have for this week. In our next episode, we're going to return to work on the ZX Spectrum portable computer. We'll see you then. Oh man, it's so warm in here. Now I gotta shave. Left, right, center, shake. Okay. This movie's kind of changed plot several times already. <laughs> Pretending to work, just like Allison. Here I go. Which side would you go to if you were in Star Wars? Hey, you wanna try these? These are fun. Is it okay that my shirt changed? And that's why we needed a new assistant. Okay. How can we take this mask off? <laughs> yes, I like to play Star Wars The Old Republic all the time. The Ben Heck Show is brought to you by Element 14, the electronic design community and online store built for engineers and hobbyists alike. Join now and browse the store at element14.com.